This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin and the electricity police. We all know about these people all over social media, people like Atif Mian. This is how the argument, argument normally goes. Is Bitcoin worth it? Bitcoin is socially wasteful. It's practically useless. It consumes the amount of electricity equivalent to all of Pakistan. Now, when I saw this, the first thing I decided to look at is who this guy was, where he was from. He is a, uh, looks like he's a scholar at Princeton. The real question is, is he worth it? Is this a good use of electricity for him to be posting this on Twitter? It may be, it may not. This is where he works. This doesn't look like the most electricity efficient place. That being said, I believe that if you paid for electricity, you should have a right to use it for what you want without people like Atif Mian from his uh, heated office in Princeton telling you what you can do with it. That's the problem when you start telling people what they can do with their electricity. Maybe it's wasteful. My grandmother used to mix all of her baked, uh, her baked goods using a big wooden spoon like this. Maybe it's kind of useful, it's wasteful to use electricity to do this. That being said, I like electric, uh, electric mixers. Maybe TV is not a good use of electricity, especially when you see what's on TV. And when you start critiquing things, is this the best use of electricity? I happen to like these kind of dancing cat memes, uh, but I, I wonder why Atif Mian is not posting about TikTok videos or YouTube or the internet in general. Internet uses 10% of global electricity, as, as far as I can tell. How much of this bandwidth is devoted to pornography people fighting with each other, vicious politics, a lot of hate, etc. And so we have to we have to uh, view these trade-offs. Obviously, the internet is a very powerful thing. I think it's a good use of electricity, and obviously Bitcoin is built on top of the internet. I also happen to like Christmas lights, even though uh, they may be wasteful from certain people's perspectives, but it really is a perspective in terms of telling people what they can do with their own electricity. The U.S. is a huge and wealthy country, and so it would make sense. Huge population, fairly wealthy, quite wealthy population compared uh, to, to most other countries. And so it's kind of an unfair comparison. Advanced civilizations use a lot of energy. You can decide whether Christmas lights are beautiful or gaudy and wasteful. That being said, if someone has purchased the electricity, I think they should be able to put up Christmas lights. My kids happen to love them. Advanced civilizations use a lot of electricity. Spacefaring civilizations, as Elon Musk wants us to become, use a lot of electricity. Guess what kind of countries don't use a lot of electricity? Very poor countries, very backwards company countries like Haiti, South Sudan, Niger. This is not the model for how we want people to live. We want electricity to run the water filters, to run the part water purification and sewage treatment plants. We want, uh, we want electricity to pay for good medical care, to light the doctor's offices, etc. And so energy usage, people are confused by this. They think that actually using energy is a bad thing. They forget that there's infinite, basically infinite energy in the universe. We can eventually move to the point of having a Dyson sphere, which is really where you just wrap a star and you capture all the energy that's being radiated out of it. In the meantime, we have solar, we have wind, we have various green forms of power, and we have nuclear fusion, which is extremely powerful as well and should not be written off just because of nuclear accidents in the past. Now, a lot of people don't realize, I should mention before we move on, that Bitcoin mining also uses a lot of renewable energy. It uses a lot of hydroelectric energy in China. It uses solar in various places. It also uh, has been running in many places on uh, off-gassing from natural gas and stranded energy sources. Here's an example of a place where they, uh, a company that uses, uses uh, methane gas that would otherwise just be leaked into the environment to run Bitcoin mining. If you're enjoying this video so far, I'd encourage you to check out my new book on Bitcoin. You can get it for free on Kindle today if you just go to the link in the description notes below. 
And in this book, I talk about a lot of these common objections to Bitcoin. I guess the bigger question, though, apart from the fact you can say people should be able to use their own electricity for whatever they want. But if we want to look at it at a macro level, what's best for, for civilization? It's good not to have energy being wasted. But we need to always compare Bitcoin to the alternative systems. You can't just say something uses a lot of electricity and not compare it to the trade-offs and the alternatives. What are the alternatives to Bitcoin as a store of value, as a global reserve asset? Well, it's basically the US dollar. And protecting the US dollar, keeping its dominance is very expensive as, uh, as Americans and as Iraqis discovered in the early 2000s, Saddam Hussein switched from using the dollar to get paid for his oil to using the euro. And this made Washington, D.C. so upset that ultimately, just two years later, obviously Iraq was invaded. America spent $5.9 trillion on wars in the Middle East and Asia since 2001. A lot of this is keeping shipping channels open. It's punishing people who want to move off the dollar, like Saddam Hussein. Again, I'm no apologist for Hussein. He was obviously a brutal, uh, a brutal ruler. That being said, there are real costs to keeping the American empire in place. And as people can see, the American empire is rapidly crumbling. If you're talking about electricity usage, it's interesting that our Twitter commenter didn't comment on Washington, D.C. When I look at this picture, I see a huge waste of electricity, a huge waste of human resources. I see bureaucracies. I see pork. I see insider deals. This is, this is no way to run a country, and this is not what the Founding Fathers envisioned. If we look at the legacy banking system as well, 3.5 million ATM machines, what's the energy cost of building these, maintaining them, putting them all around the country? These are very, very expensive. They're very, uh, very wasteful. Brinks trucks, moving gold around, moving coins around and bills around. These are also create a lot of pollution, not good for the environment. You can debate whether they're a good or bad use of electricity, but this is the, the, the cost of the legacy banking system. When you think of bank branches, I haven't been in one in, in a while because of COVID, but they're very empty. It's hard to, to really know uh, the point of them. They use a lot of heat. They use a lot of electricity. Uh, you have a lot of people standing around that don't seem to be doing anything. I would, I would maintain that this is not a good use of human capital or electricity either. So when people criticize Bitcoin, they need to compare it to something. You can't just criticize it in a vacuum. When we look at the U.S. government and the amount of waste that it generates. Here's an example. This is an old article. Uh, Twenty million dollars spent on the International Fund for I for Ireland as part of this was back from the 1990s. Um, I love Ireland. It's a beautiful country, but it sounds like in this case that most of this money went for pony trekking centers and golf videos. So everyone knows governments are wasteful. U.S. government may be the most wasteful. Uh, I'll link to this too if you want to see the uh, congressional pig book and all the uh, all the pork that has come through just in 2020. People want to go back to a gold standard. Obviously, gold is very energy intensive. It's very expensive to store. It's expensive to mine. It's, it's bad for the environment to mine. It's a fairly dirty process. That being said, if you are in a gold standard, I do like gold as a form of hard money. Bitcoin is obviously better. But if you have something very valuable, no one would ever argue that guarding it is a waste of money. It makes sense if you have a lot of gold bars, you need to build somewhere, a place like uh, Fort Knox to store the gold. Likewise, Bitcoin uses a lot of electricity. It uses a lot of energy to store value, to make it secure. The current system, the money printing, the low interest rates that encourage misallocation of capital, all the government pork, the government spending that's being monetized by the Fed, this is a very wasteful wasteful system, not just in terms of its energy usage, but in terms of uh, its, its impact on citizens. The true rate of inflation is much higher than is reported by the CPI. We can see here using the Chapwood Index that the five-year average for inflation is really 
in the high single digits to the low teens, depending where you live when you actually look at a real basket that reflects the true cost of living in the U.S. And when people, when pay doesn't keep up with inflation, there are huge human costs as well. This is a uh, chart of the hash rate for Bitcoin. This is a measurement really of the computing power that's used to secure the network. This is one reason the Bitcoin network uses so much electricity because it is extremely secure. Bitcoin has never been hacked. You have all these Bitcoin miners that are uh, adding new blocks to the blockchain. You have all the full nodes that are monitoring to make sure that Bitcoin protocols are followed. This is very energy intensive, but this is the digital equivalent of Fort Knox. This is how capital is, this is how value is stored and protected in the Bitcoin network. So when you criticize the Bitcoin network, if you're someone who, who's criticizing it from your cushy office at Princeton defending the fiat system, you have to compare it to the alternatives, a gold standard, paper currency, the current banking system, and we can see here the just the yearly cost. These numbers are a couple years old, but you get the general idea. Obviously, Bitcoin mining uh, energy costs have gone up a lot since then, but this is what we're comparing it to. We have to compare it to a gold standard system, a fiat money system. And I would suggest that as a way of protecting against hyperinflation, as a way of protecting citizens and common people from the ravages of Federal Reserve and other central bank money uh, printing policies, that Bitcoin is actually a really good use of energy. I will link to uh, Dan Held's uh, article on this as well, where he talks about proof of work and energy usage. This is where I got this chart from. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.